Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all peoples and gave us your Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, who gives us the Torah. Amen? Amen. Amen. This week's reading is Kitisa, Kitisa. And it says, and that means when you take, you may be seated. I'll read the first few verses in Hebrew and then in English it says, Hakodesh Esrim Geraf Hashekel Machat Zit Hashekel Truma Lachashem Koha Over Al Hapikudim Meben Yesrim Shana Vamaala Yiten Trumat Hashem. And that says, Then Hashem spoke to Moses. And he said, when you take the census of the children of Israel for their number, every man shall give a ransom for himself to Hashem. When you number them, that there may be no plague among them when you number them. This is what everyone among those who are numbered shall give half a shekel. According to the shekel of the sanctuary, a shekel is 20 gerafs. A half a shekel should be an offering to Hashem. Everyone included among those who are numbered from 20 years old and above shall give an offering to Hashem. Amen? Amen. Again, to break this down further, again, this is Exodus 30 that we're in. The Lord said to Moses again, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life. At the same time he is counted, then no plague will come to them when you number them. See, in the last two studies that we did, we were about the design of the wilderness tabernacle and the furnishings and the priestly garments. This Shabbat continues with God's instruction to Moses on the mountain. It says, See, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. In order to fund the building of the sanctuary, God commands Moses to take a census of the people of Israel and to instruct them to give a half a shekel of silver. This is what everyone who is numbered shall give half a shekel as a contribution to the Lord. Although the construction of the Mishkan, the sanctuary, is important and a sacred task, God makes it very clear that his commandment is to rest on the Sabbath and it takes priority over this worthy goal. We may all be working hard toward worthwhile achievements, and even those who are, are those things are for the purpose of serving God, but we must remember that God prefers us to put them on hold for a day in order to keep the Shabbat holy. Amen? Resting and being refreshed on the seventh day of the Shabbat, of Shabbat is a special sign of our covenantal relationship with Almighty God. It is, in fact, a testimony that he is the creator. And just as he created the world in six days and rested on the seventh, so are we to work six days and rest on the seventh. Exodus 31, 17 says, it will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and they said to him, Come, let us make a God who shall go before us. As for Moses, this man brought us up out of the land of Egypt, but we don't know what's become of him. And while Moses is still on Mount Sinai receiving God's instruction, the people become impatient for his return and demand that Aaron make them a God that they can see. Aaron gives in to the pressure and fashions, fashions a golden calf, proclaiming the idol as their God. 
This is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, he said. When God sees the people worshiping a golden calf, he threatens to destroy the nation of Israel and to start, and to start all over again with Moses. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone that, I might, that my anger may be burned against them and that I may destroy them, and then I will make you unto a great nation. I couldn't help but note in my reading in the First Fruits of Zion, it says that when we attempt to do religion without first consulting God's instruction, we end up with a golden calf. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Meanwhile, Aaron made the calf, and he did not know at the time that God had chosen him to be the high priest over Israel. And when the people asked him to make an idol for them, he took the role of priesthood unto himself. The people did not know that God had ordered them to, make, uh, to raise the contribution of gold and precious materials for the building of the tabernacle. If they had waited, Moses would have told them instead. Aaron told them to donate the gold or the jewelry for the idol. Here's the deal. Like the Israelites, some of us must go through periods in our lives where we descend into sin or fall away from the Lord, but God promises the hope of restoration and renewal. I believe we were talking about teshuvah. If we agree to come back to his repentance, into repentance to find forgiveness. Amen? Amen. As Rabbi demonstrated, Teshuvah. The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness, chesed, covenant loyalty and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression, transgressions, and sin. The more we become conformed and transformed into the image and the likeness of God, in whose image we have been created, the more we will demonstrate these wonderful qualities of his chesed, love, mercy, grace, patience, long-suffering, goodness, and truth. We will become less judgmental and more merciful. We will criticize less and intercede more. Shabbat Shalom. Hands on the Latin morning I'll take flight to the house of the